There are two types of roof framing systems you will encounter in residential construction projects. And that is either conventional rafter framing or manufactured roof trusses. This roof sheathing inspection will cover the most common of the two, the manufactured roof trusses. However, first let us briefly look at the differences between the two. Manufactured roof trusses are probably the most widely used in residential construction, especially in residential track development projects. Whereas conventional rafter framing, also known as stick framing or cut and stack, is the traditional roof framing method and it is often used in custom home construction. In order to set you up for success, let us go over truss calculations and the submittal to the building department. First, I want to mention that manufactured trusses are often a deferred submittal, which means that with prior authorization from the building department, manufactured roof trusses may be submitted after the issuance of the building plans and permit, but before they are installed. You will normally see a list of deferred submittals on the title sheet of the approved plans. And with that said, here is a quick flow chart which outlines a typical manufactured truss submittal sequence when trusses are deferred. When truss calculations are a deferred item, the truss calculations are first sent to the design professional of record so that the design professional can vet the truss calcs to the overall design of the building. After the design professional reviews and approves the truss calcs, they are then submitted to the building department for their records, review, and approvals. Finally, after the truss calculations are issued approved by the building department, only then can the trusses be installed. Now, I do have to mention that unfortunately, review timeframes for truss calculations do differ throughout building departments, from same day approvals to worst case scenario, two weeks review. So I highly encourage you to contact your local building department to find out their requirements, but most importantly, to find out what their review timeframes are. A roof sheathing inspection has some similarities to the exterior shear inspection. With that said, I encourage you to view the exterior shear inspection video since the roof and shear inspections are very often done simultaneously. The methodology I always advise when conducting the roof sheathing inspection is to inspect every element above the top plate. And with that said, the building inspector verifies the orientation of the roof rafters to the approved plan and truss calculations. The roof pitch is also verified. And if the building is in proximity to the property line, verify distance of roof eaves projections into the property line setbacks to assure projections are not within the forbidden zone or fire resistance rated zone. Verify location and number of roof ventilations. During this inspection, the vent opening should be cut out. The building inspector also verifies the energy compliance forms for roof radiant barrier requirements. And here is where you will find the roof radiant barrier requirements. This is typically the ideal inspection to verify such requirements since a great majority of the time radiant barrier roof sheathing is installed instead of the manual foil method. Let us now review an example truss calculation for this inspection. Every truss calculation packet comes with a cover sheet. Also included is a truss placement diagram identical to a roof plan. And on this example diagram, you'll see dimensions which are typically shown in foot, inches, and sixteenths. The truss identifiers are also shown here which are a letter followed by a number. The diagram also shows the location of the attic access and the location of the forced air unit. This is very important information since trusses supporting the mechanical unit would typically be special trusses that are designed to carry such loads. Now let us review the trusses shown between the forced air unit, which are 3A05, 
and one A06. Let's start with looking at A05 trusses. And I will review some items of interest starting with the truss identifier, which is A05, the quantity, three total, ply, which would indicate the number of trusses attached alongside each other. So for example, if this number was two ply, then two trusses would be attached together with a special nailing or screw pattern. The roof pitch is also shown. Lengths, and these numbers starting clockwise with the number 1 through 15, which reference to joints and areas of trusses. Under the heading Lumber, you see lumber sizes and grades for top cords, bottom cords, webs, and this special web piece which will support the mechanical unit between numbers 12 and 13. And notice the special web piece is shown as a 2x6 Douglas fir standard stud grade. Also of interest are the truss plate connector locations and sizes which are identified throughout this truss diagram. After verifying the trusses to the truss calculations, the building inspector verifies location of shear transfers which typically receive edge nailing and structural hardware at these locations. Here are examples of shear transfers. Drag trusses are also verified which are single or multi-ply trusses which also require edge nailing at the roof sheathing. Drag trusses typically include structural straps tying the truss to the top plates. Girder trusses if installed should be verified which also may consist of single or multi-ply trusses and typically edge nailing is required at the roof sheathing to these trusses. Please note that End supports to girder trusses typically require the installation of double 2x framing members or 4x framing members at these locations. The building inspector also verifies gable end bracing as shown here. Often the truss manufacturer's recommendations are followed. However, gable end construction details are very often specified by the design professional of record. After all elements above the top plate and below the roof sheathing are verified, it is now time to safely get on the roof and verify the nailing. Once you are safely on the roof, the roof sheathing size and type, nailing type, size, and spacing, which includes nailing as per the structural plan at all trusses, including edge nailing at girder and drag trusses, are verified. If you are in California and in a wildland urban interface area, generally rural areas, please be aware of special requirements related to the roof sheathing inspection which consist of flame and ember intrusion resistant eave or cornice vents, non-combustible or ignition resistant construction at open and enclosed roof eave areas. However, please consult with your local building department and check the approved plan for specific wildland urban interface requirements to your project. Well, this concludes the roof sheathing inspection. I thank you for watching this video and I look forward to any questions, comments, or suggestions. Until next time, take care and be better than well. Stay awesome, everyone.